There is this beautiful dining table with so many set pieces of plates. I have a hammer. And I have a sickle. Great, let's just cut it. Let's All just right, like, I'm gonna it. cut it. So you shatter this plate. It's just like a ceramic little plate. You shatter it by stabbing <gasps> it right in the middle. Nice. So we cut to Coda in the room. Uh, Coda is staring at this knife. This dagger has a, uh, a different kind of magic light around it. It's, it's like a pale blue. Um, it's it's really nice. Yeah, I'm gonna grab this. Great. And you see in front of you the most majestic library. And at the end of this room, you see a humanoid shape tending something bathed in light. And if you look even more closely, you can see a beautifully preserved red flower. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Sword AF. My name is Damian Haas. I'm a DM. Uh, it's my first time DMing. Uh, and let's meet our incredibly talented cast of characters. I'm Shane. I play Fernie, a Warforged druid named uh, the, yeah, Fernie. <laughs> Guy. Also, speaking of which, we do have minis today. They were made by a very, very talented human being, Stitched Crow. Um, they made them all on their own. They were kind enough to send them to us, so thank you very much, Stitched Crow. They're incredible. They're amazing. Yeah, they're so cool. I'm Angela. <laughs> I'm playing Bug, a goblin, who's a little bit of a cleric trickster. Hi, guys. I'm Amanda. I am playing Dolores Paradise. I'm a Lightfoot Halfling Warlock. And this is my beautiful figurine. She looks so cute, and look at, hi. Yeah, everyone's got accessories hi. today. Oh yeah, we got accessories. Sexeries? Get out of here, Some of us dirty bitch. It, hey, I'm Chance, uh, I'm Coda, I'm Akir. Uh, I'm an elf wizard blade singer. So when we last left our heroes, they were carrying a flagon of moon water up to the castle of saint Sauveur. They made their way through an abandoned town that strangely enough looked like all life had disappeared in an instant. They made their way past a spooky old werewolf beast thing, defeated it as a team. Bug, of course, getting the final hit, getting some cheers from that. And they made their way into the castle where once again, there didn't seem to be any life around. Remembering what they were told to not touch anything unless they felt like it or kind of had to, they made their way into a few different rooms, baked a little bit of pie, maybe stole a thing or two, uh, maybe broke a couple plates, but eventually made their way up to the library to find the castellan to whom they needed to deliver that flagon of moon water. Let us begin. As you push your way through this large, ornate mahogany door with grotesqueries all around it, which I learned is gargoyles when there's no water involved, um, oh. light spills in and you make your way into the most beautifully ornate library you've ever seen. Books from floor to ceiling. <gasps> and over near these beautiful stained glass windows is a shadowy humanoid figure. And it turns around and makes direct eye contact with you. What do you do? Hello? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> come into the light. Don't well, go. What? <laughs> what you, that was what? very demanding. Honestly, oh, I okay. She said what she said. Well, she he's said in said. the dark and I can't see his face. No, he's very dark. That is fair. I'm sorry to be so mysterious in this castle here. Allow me to come into the light, as the beautiful woman has said. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, she's gonna get horny again. Love this. When is she not Library, horny? God, books just open me up. Mm. What? And as he steps into the light, you see that it's not quite a man, not quite a machine. This construct of clockwork and stained glass and books all is an amalgam, taking the form of a long-bodied, handsome man, gracefully makes his way forward. Not what I expected. Well, I must be honest, you're not what I expected. Where is Tillop? Where is... Tillop telling me all these stories about Guinevere. I love hearing them. Tillop is actually trying to retire, so we've been tasked with bringing the moon water to you. Jutalor, has it really been this long? Well, as long as you have the moon water, I cannot ask for more. Please. He reaches out his hands to you. Can, can, can I get a moment? Can we just get a moment? Can you just turn around real quick and go back to the dark real quick? You, okay. you know what, uh, roll persuasion. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I don't know if I'll just do that. I got a four plus. Mm-hmm. Five, nine. Four plus five, nine. Okay, he looks at you and he says, all right, I will take one step back, but I will still face you, and I will plug one ear. Oh. He can probably hear you, I think. What? I think he's similar to oh. me. Okay, well, guys, 
Should I just give away the moon water to this guy? This is, uh, this is also, I, I just want to point out, this is a group effort. You're acting like it's, you're saying I. I well, I like... have it in my purse and it's been very heavy and it's That's been true. weighing on me, That's literally. True. Well, let's, let's. But this is our job. Let's just do it so we can go. Let's get the money. Look, he's a robot like me, except he's made out of clocks and books. But the gate was broken. What are you? I, let's I give him the moon. Let's just give okay. him. Let's just... I mean, okay, okay. It is our I'm, job. I'm overruled. We didn't do our job once. Yeah, let's just do our but job Don't do once. your job twice. Yeah. Shame on all of us. Okay, I'm overruled. You can come into the light now. Oh, good. Thank you for permission in my home. So he walks over to you and holds out his hands. He's like, may I have the thing I hired you to do? Yes, and Dolores reaches into her huge bag that's been dragging and there's a bunch of dirt and leaves that's been carrying the bottom of the bag and she grabs the moon water and she looks to the others as she hands it over. Yeah. And she... Yep. It's our job. Okay. There you go. Uh, handle it with care. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, oh. and so he walks on over to, uh, <laughs> you see uh, in the corner there is this beautiful red flower. Um, it's a dahlia, a dahlia flower. And he begins to spray it and see it uh, move just a little bit, a little twitch and almost open up a little more and he's like, oh, perfect, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for your expeditious delivery. Right on time. <laughs> You've really done an excellent job. Yes! Yes! We did it. Yes! And we didn't release a horrible turtle thing on so, the world. Yes! So we'll just uh, take the money now. Okay, fantastic. Here is what I owe you. And he pulls out his pouch uh, after gently placing down the moon water on a countertop and takes out 30 pieces of gold. Oh. And hands them to you, Dolores. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll hold on to the, the cash. Well, clearly, as the leader of the group, I will be giving this to you. <laughs> 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 he was just saying that because I was holding it, I, you know. And you're very bossy. <laughs> 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 okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. I have the money. Let's get out of here. Now, one moment. I will say a couple of things before you go. Oh, of course. Um, you are bleeding from three out of five of your face holes, because Dolores is very low on HP from that werewolf fight. I couldn't help but notice you're quite injured. All of you must I'm at least fine. rest here for the evening. That sounds pretty cool. This place is awesome. Thank you for noticing. We take such pride in keeping it together. Yeah, I loved the hole in your bathroom. Oh, yes, our toilet hole. Really entertaining. Now. Usually, Dilip makes his delivery and goes, and we continue on business as normal, but I'll be honest with you, things have not been normal for a long time. Hundreds of years, perhaps, I know not. You see, this castle is cursed, as is the town around it. This may shock you. Whoa. Yeah. yeah we had, there was no one in the town. Yeah. Oh. The gate was cracked That open. pink flame was there, and I really wanted to go, but I told everyone that we shouldn't. There was a werewolf. Yeah, oh yeah. my god. Now listen. Philip is too old to do anything about this, but you are four striping adventurers looking much stronger than an average delivery service. I know if you, com you have completed your contract and gotten your 30 gold, but I would like to offer you more, so much more. Yes, how and much? we could take it. Bug, 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 how, how much more gold? As much as you could possibly dream. You may empty out our vaults. Come on! I, I run right up to Coda. I look up at him. Coda, this is what we've always wanted. You know those stupid guys that drive in front of us and make fun of us for being mercenaries and just delivering things? This is what Bug. we've always wanted. Bug. <laughs> Bernie also stops. He's like, turn, 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 no, turn. He's like, we get any amount of money. No, like, no. A thousand or like yeah, two. I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm on board. I could not be more on board. Please, Coda. I push past Bug old. and I'm like, wait, me too. No. Hello. Okay. Yeah, hi, Dolores. We could yes. ask for hundreds of thousands yes. or even just like little pennies. This you, doesn't feel safe. You guys, we need to play it cool. He's still right here. Steam Can is coming out of Bernie's ears. He's like, oh, wow. Can you go back into the dark? Can you go in the dark and hold this ear? Okay, but Koda, I'm hoping that you will change your mind because everyone else here is so on board. You heard you. Please don't you guys, blankets. I said I'm on board. Okay, cool. I will give cool. you I'm ready one to... minute to okay. discuss. Okay. Oh my God, okay, go into Flops the dark. Back and... Guys, this feels wrong to me. What? Uh, are you being distrustful of a robot? Because that's that is. No, uh, that feels up, right? really I'm gonna so unplug. That actually Stop. is a little. I'll, I'll plug back. Up. What? Uh, yeah. No, no, don't worry. I, I, I've, I've, I've got, I've got this. Uh, come on. Bernie, that's not what I said. You <laughs> know, no, I just. It does feel like you've been friends with yeah. Bernie for a while. Right. Uh, the year is 847. Like yeah, we're like, past I mean, like, that now. On, okay. Right? He is. He is clock and books. You are Earth. Very well, different. I'm wood, what and, do you think? and I think, I think, 
books are made out of the same thing. Thank you. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be listening. No, I can't doing? listen. I don't know. I don't read. And Dolores, here's the thing. I'll be really quick. But this is not just about the job. This is about our mission to be heroes. This is about our longing to be bigger than what we are now. But isn't it about just being together? Uh, I guess, but I really oh. just want to be, really, I just want to be a hero. Okay, All right. well, Bug, you are stepping on my foot, and it hurts. But other than that, I will take a hug, and then we can continue. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. I walk over. Oh. Oh, 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 I feel, oh, I feel like, yeah, Okay, sorry. I feel like you're really not plugging your ears, but anyway. I don't have gonna... ears, I'm made of clockwork. We'll take it, we'll okay. do whatever you want. Great, so you don't want any details about the contract that I'm about to offer you. Okay, what, oh, what, what are we, oh, well, what are we that's doing? That's what I that's was saying. We should, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What are we, what are we we'll doing? listen to the contract. I was like straight up in the middle of explaining it, then you were like, go over there. Like, that's oh. true. Yeah. I'm blaming God. Okay, that's not how I sound. <laughs> what? My name is Gaspard. I am... Gaspard? Your name is what? Gaspard. Gaspard. What's your name? Kudu? <laughs> is it Kudu? <gasps> Koda, just okay. give me a shot. Sorry, I'm... Gaspard. Come on, just Thank give you. Him a Go shot. ahead, Gaspards. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I am the Castellan of this place. I have been taking care of it by myself for so long. For you see, one day there was a grave transformation of everyone in the castle town, and the castle itself. I was the only one to maintain a semi-humanoid form. I, but you're, well, you're not Sorry, I'm just listening. <laughs> you see, this castle is cursed. And everybody has taken on a different form. And I do not know how to break it, but we can't take it anymore. I'm so sad. I'm so sad being so lonely here. And if not me, then at least the prince. The prince, the hope of our kingdom. That beautiful prince who taught us poetry <laughs> and philosophy and all these wonderful things. Seeing his form transform from human until something so deeply inhuman. Wow. I cannot imagine the pain he feels every day. Wait. I just need him to be safe and be happy. What no are... longer being this terrible monster he is. Uh... Monster like a, like a, like a, what kind of monster? Terrible, no, skin like no human. Size completely inhuman. Mm. Just hollow, completely on the inside. No humanity there at all. Right. Wow, I've never seen anything like that. Roll deception. <laughs> <laughs> uh, five, five. Plus. Uh, minus one. So it's a four. four. Wait a minute. I can tell exactly what you had for damn breakfast. You've definitely seen something like that before. Recently. Oh, Did you yeah. see the prince? What happened? Well, I didn't know he was a prince. You saw him! Fernie? You Fernie? saw him. We saw him outside the city. And we said, hello, sir, and then he just he went off. He was outside the city. How did he get out? The gate was broken. Uh, what? That's what I said. And in through there. Tell me, is the prince all right? Yeah. Yes. Both of you rolled a seven. <laughs> Five. 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 Plus. Eleven. Minus one. <laughs> Four, oh, that's 16. weird. You, I trust with my life for some reason. <laughs> okay. You say jump, I'll say where into the dark. Oh. But you, okay. you're hiding something. Tell me, what is going on? Well, we, we ran into like a wolf type thing. Okay. And it was trying to kill us. And it was not friendly at it all. It was not friendly at all. Okay. And I tried to tell Bug not to kill it. Okay. But Bug did kill. I okay. tried to reason with it, but Bug just and beat the shit out of it. Right. Okay, and wait. Bug did do the last, you know, downswing With on a huge hammer. Bug it, beat Bug, its brain down. It is true. Bug's day. Bug got their moment, okay. and they absolutely murdered the crap out of it. <laughs> it was awesome. Fernie. <laughs> okay. All right. First of all, no. Take own this. Yeah, you got that was your moment. <laughs> I this think, is your moment. I think <laughs> this is your moment, Bug. You shouldn't. Uh, don't downplay uh, your accomplishments. Uh, okay. So. uh, uh, and you didn't even realize it was a prince. Uh, no, stop. Wait, congrats on your moment. And then what else? We Did murdered the, the prince. We murdered the prince. And Bob oh, the wolf did... isn't the prince. What? Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. No, oh. the wolf is not the prince. The, okay. the wolf is a town pervert. You have done us a great favor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, completely, so completely unrelated. What you girls. saying? Is... Totally different thing. Bug, I put down my 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 satchel and I put down my hammer. And I go. So what you're saying is. 
I'm a hero. Sounds like you get all the credit for killing the town pervert. I, I took it. down the town pervert. You did it. And you, and you both did a, did a good job. You did a great job. I also um, very much said that you did a fantastic job, Bug. And I would love another hug at any time. I'll give you one later. Then this is amazing. You are exactly the heroes we want. You killed the pervert. Yes. Now what of the prince? Yes. We haven't seen that. I guess I haven't seen him. Yeah, I haven't seen him. I thought that was the prince. I'll keep, I'll tell you to keep an eye out for him. He is. What does he look like? Mm, he was transformed from a beautiful, majestic piece of human meat to all of a sudden being a, uh, how do you say, like a, like a plate, like something small and stupid, like a plate, like a stupid little plate. <laughs> It is funny in a cosmic sort of way, yes. Oh. Well, I can say honestly, I've not seen a plate. That's yet. wonderful. Great. Oh, well. uh, so, what do you need from us? <laughs> okay, so here's I what I need from you. Seen a plate. I need you to figure out how to break this curse. <laughs> I don't know exactly the way to do it, but mm -hmm. I will tell you how this happened to all of us. One day, our entire. I like you. Bug. Our entire village was approached by a witch. We were starving. It was winter. We barely had any shelter and she made us an offer. We could live all together in opulence and glory if we promised her our firstborn royal prince. Huh. Never do that. Well, we learned our lesson. Out of nowhere, the castle sprung up. We don't even know how this happened, but we occupied it for many years, and eventually our leaders had a baby. We all loved this young prince. We first thought he was just a normal baby, but we then saw his aptitude for not only poetry and philosophy, but empathy. Caring for the poor. He was top marks in riding. He was top marks in reading. He was top marks in everything. It's the type of hope that not only our castle needed, but the world. So you can see why we hid the prince from the witch when she checked in every year. But one year she found us out, and she was none too pleased, for she wanted a baby, not an adult man. She turned us all into these horrible forms, and we were gone forevermore from the world. And then she made him a plate? She made him a plate. Which, uh, what did the plate look like? Like every other plate. Okay, here. <laughs> okay. Nothing special about it. Doesn't that suck? Nondescript plate. Is it in um, a bedroom? By ch it, it is, is where the plates Enough plate about store. the plate. Who cares about the plate? Yes, we will talk about the plate what later. Do you, what, how do we, how do we How do we help this you? Well, well let me heroes. just give you the manual to how to break the curse that I didn't use for 500 years. No, I don't know. Oh. That's why we need heroes. Oh, that I need you to investigate the castle and find whatever you can about this. All I know is the castle sprung up nearly from out of nowhere. And we're all sort of stuck in the rooms that we are stuck in. We've never really explored too much. At first we thought we would have the prince make another baby, and I suppose that's possible, but you see it's hard for a plate to fall did in love. Did he make a fork? Uh, is that his baby? <laughs> Tell you what, he didn't fork because he can't, because he's a plate. I, I wanted to lighten the mood, I, okay. This is very grim. A pervert has died. Please be respectful. <laughs> <laughs> you must find in exactly how to break the curse. Do you accept this contract? And he pulls out a long sheet of paper, scribbles on it for a moment, so and shows it to you. It, what happens if we, can't, if we can't help you? That is a great question. You're asking the right things. I like this one. The hero. Uh, yes. You see, by signing this contract, you become a part of our story. You're not cursed in the same way, but you are part of the castle until you solve this. What? Oh my God. Yes. I... See it through to completion, but I will remind you what is at stake here. Everything at our vault, gold piled as high as you can see, thousands upon thousands of pieces. Oh. Enough for multiple jobs of delivery. Wow. Oh. Listen, you guys. Are we allowed to sleep on it? Oh, please. On the gold? No, that would be on awful. The if it's a lot Dolores. of it. Oh. Why don't we show you hospitality for the night? No strings attached. And in the morning, you come back to me, you sign. Yes? Or we don't. Or you don't? Yes. In or my room, would, I would adore a tub and a window <laughs> Here we go. Here looking we go. at the moon. It's called a moon window. Oh, and is I would that like a new that. thing and you made up? Let's just whip one right up. No, we either have a window looking at the moon or we don't. Do you like me? Not yet. Okay, well, <laughs> same. Gaspard looks at you and says, fantastic. And as a show of friendship, I assure you that regardless, in the morning, I will present to you the dagger of friendship. A special dagger that we keep in the castle 
to show people that we care and we love them. That sounds incredible. Thank you. I can't wait to see it. Well, then allow me to show you to your rooms. So Gaspar takes you down the third set of stairs from the library, down a wing of the castle that you haven't seen yet, up another set of stairways with uh, multiple, multiple individual rooms branching off from this area, but a beautiful common area in the middle of it. Um, <laughs> of course I get my own room. I'm a hero now. <laughs> We can hear you, Bug. So it's this beautiful common room. There's a roaring fireplace, um, these lush, Ooh. plump furniture pillows. Um, oh. There is a lot of books to be read. There are, uh, there are cups that are not moving um, with teapots beside them, also not moving. Um, there's a lot of delicious food around. And, Yum, um, I love ribs. It is maybe about um, nine or 10 p.m. And wouldn't you know it, there's a window with a moon in it. And Dolores is fucking stoked. <sighs> and everyone else is just relaxing. And you have a little bit of time before maybe you're sleepy enough for bed. So um, Gaspard is um, standing by the door, plugging his ears. But if you need anything, you can flag him down for food or whatever. But otherwise, it's time to decompress from this long, long, long day. Remember, you had to fight this wolf. Um, this is still uh, not too long after you had to do the turtle dragon stuff. Everything that happened in Grendel. And now you're gonna maybe have a contract for thousands and thousands of gold. Can he hear us? He's closing his ears, so. I don't know why he's still But I feel like we should test to I make think he's sure. In, he... I think he's in like rest mode right now. Fernie being a warforged uh, is correct, that Gaspard has tucked in some of his limbs, has sort Got of hunkered it. down a little bit, and um, it's sort of a sentry mode where if cool. needed, he can be summoned. But Got it. Huh. I'm looking at the books on the shelves, not looking at any of you. I'm staring at the moon. Did you guys know that when the night is on the left, it's waxing, and that feels spooky to me? <laughs> See, when you started that, it sounded like it was gonna be a fact. <laughs> Bug's in the corner, and I'm just like practicing with my hammer. I look at Bug, and I'm like, sloppy. A <sighs> really intense eye contact with Coda. It's like, I'm looking up. And now I want to invoke duplicity. Hell yeah. Do I have to roll? No, I just, just can't. Tell me. Okay. What does that look like to you? Okay. What are you doing with it? So, after I break eye contact with Coda, I see myself, and there's a mirror image of myself, and I have my hammer. Now I'm just literally zoning out, and Coda's not looking at me. So now I'm gonna fight myself, and okay. suddenly I'm fighting my ego, and I go, <laughs> and again, it's sloppy, and I look at myself, and I go, sloppy. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> I go, you're sloppy. You're sloppy. You're a hero, you're sloppy. <laughs> and Dolores just walks over and she puts her hand on Bug's shoulder and it's the wrong Bug, it's the other one. And she's like, ah, I don't like that. I don't like that. And then I put my hammer down. I go, we gotta make a decision. I'm, that's a lot of money. I just don't wanna get trapped in the castle, but I think we need the money. We're already trapped in the castle. That's I'm, what I'm saying. I'm scared if we get trapped here for long, I might get turned into a robot. Wait. Wait a second. Ernie. I hate to make this a big deal, but maybe we go around and just talk about everyone's goals. Cause do you guys want to be mercenaries all your lives? That's the sweetest thing ever. No. <laughs> <laughs> Either we do this and we get money and our lives are changed or we're stuck being mercenaries. Like if we got all this money, like what would you guys do? I'd probably give it to my children. You have children? You have children? Yeah. Is that why oh, you God. bake all that shit? <laughs> <laughs> How many children? I also enjoy baking. It's very therapeutic for me and I process a lot of emotions through it. I, you know, I have three. They're just, yeah, they're hanging out and I'd probably give that to them. Coda? Oh, you don't want to talk about them? <laughs> no, it's, it's, they're busy. I don't care about the money. But do you care about the fight? Yeah. Why don't you care about the money? Don't need it. But do you care about being a mercenary? No. But then why are you what here? What do you care about? Just got nowhere else to go right now. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Fernie, what about you? Do you know what money is? I know what money is, but do I know what money does? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fernie, Fernie looks up and a moth like lands and goes into one eye and comes out the other and just flies oh. away while he's just like <laughs> oh. staring out. Like just like. It's, it's just if we want to fight or not. Like how did you feel when you went through that beaver dam? Is that what you did? What was what? it? Well, I was, a, I was a badger. Yes. How did you feel when you became that badger and you saved all of us from dying? 
I mean, I just, I felt like a badger and I, I was just fully in badger mode and, and I was thinking like a badger, which um, y you're kind of just thinking about digging and just going. <laughs> but afterwards, uh, it felt cool because everyone was, I, uh, everyone was having a good time and yeah. so I was having a good time and being with my friends yeah. and stuff. And that's, I think that's what's most important to me. So what do we do, folks? Do we follow the, the feeling we get when we like complete a really hard thing together or do we just keep doing delivery? Well, I'm worried that if we get the money, we're just gonna, is that, me, is that the end? Not for me. Of us? Do we have to stop hanging out? No. no. No, if anything, I think it'll make us all feel really powerful and then we just start defeating bitches. Wait, if we have enough money, we could just, we could, we don't even need to, we could just be our own thing. Like, what if we start our own thing? Oh my gosh. Like, stick together? I've gotta come along because Bug's so sloppy, he'll get killed by himself, so I've gotta come. And I have to come and take care, you know, what if, what if something happens? What if you need me to backflip anywhere? I mean, I'm, I, I got nowhere else to go. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> if we have nowhere else to be, then I, I think this feels like a pact a little bit. I'm in. I'm in. Dolores just like squats down and jumps up and does a quick little flip and then sits down on the couch and she's like, all hands in. All hands in. Was that lame? Did, what, it was so what I just lame, did, lame? I was, I was with yeah. you. Okay. What, what are we called? Mother's babies? No. Oof. I'm pretty sure you okay. won't think of it, Dolores. Um, <laughs> pie pals? I oh. love that one, actually. <laughs> Jesus. Look, just like butterflies in a forest, it'll just eventually come to you. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what would happen to me in the forest. I believe okay. that. Sure, I totally believe that. As long as it's not Pie Pals, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, probably not Pie Pals. What's wrong with Pie Pals? It's awful. It's really okay. bad. And then before you know it, Bug is <laughs> I don't get how he just falls asleep in full clothing. <laughs> he didn't even go to his room. I know. He's standing. I know. I'll put Bug on my shoulders. Let's go. His bow, his bow-legged <laughs> legs. So just go right. He's the only other small, small person. You're like, smaller than Bo. His bow-legged legs just like <laughs> slip over my shoulders. Roll athletics for me. <laughs> it's been a long day. Nice. Nineteen. <laughs> wow. Wow. Plus one twenty. She's a okay, mother. So I'm a mother, honey. Dolores literally just palms bug <laughs> like from the back and just like straight up walks like. I go, <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, good night, guys. And he just stands there and also just like. <laughs> That's crazy. So I toss Bug to land right on his bed, just the exact same lands. <laughs> as good I night, Bug! As I fly in my bed, I go, I'm a hero! <laughs> <laughs> Is Bug a honk shoo, honk shoo, or a uh, honk me, 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 me? It's. <laughs> It's just one continuous. Uh, just, it never ends. Uh, you don't uh, breathe in, in the whole <laughs> night. In the morning, it just goes like, oh, oh. And then I open my door and I put my shawl and I fold it into a beautiful little square on this weird chair. And then I just tuck into bed. Ooh, it's a little cold. And with that, you are taking your first long rest since that rest station Back, 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 way closer to Grendel. It's been a long ass day. So everybody's gonna heal up again to maximum hit points. Yay. You did gain, gain some experience, not quite enough to level up, but you've already got these new spells that we discussed off camera uh, for this level up situation. So you might be seeing some new stuff today. And uh, yeah, so you're all safely tucked away in bed. So we go to Dolores' room, the most pretty one with a window facing the moon. Just like she asked. She's sleeping there soundly, and Dolores, all of a sudden, in your deep sleep, you start to smell something. Something familiar like burning wood. Oh. You open your eyes, and you find yourself in a forest. A younger you, gathering berries for a pie that you'll be making your children. And as you start to notice more and more of this burning smell, you realize, it's coming from the direction of your home. What do you do? I drop everything and I run towards my house. 
You're sprinting through these woods, the underbrush, pushing branch after branch aside. My heart is like beating out of my chest. And as you come into this clearing where you and your family have this beautiful homestead, you see the house you've worked on for years with this family on fire. You go to let out a scream and everything turns black and white, freezes, except for the fire. I've been here before. As you squint through the fog and the smoke, you recognize none of your family members, but a single figure sitting on the porch, twiddling his thumbs. He looks up at you, just lets out a gentle pat beside him, beckoning you to come sit. I am like tingling all over and I just feel this weight on my chest is just pushing me down as I like slowly walk towards the figure. You get closer and you recognize a figure that you've met with many times. Morisel, the fiend of broken promises. Do you sit? Uh, sure. Okay. Hi. Hello. You're so tense. Why now? You keep bringing me back to that part in the dream to say hi. I, I don't, don't really know why you keep doing that. Well, it's very special to me, Mother. It's where we first met. Mm. You remember? Oh, I remember. Hmm. Did you bring me anything special from your travels this time? Yes, hmm. I did. My hand is like shaking as I go into my purse, but I hold it back and I pull out this branch. Oh, I see, a twig sprite. That's it. He holds it and you see all the color drain from this twig and then he sets it down. It's really hard to gather stuff when everyone's watching me. I don't want to come off, sorry. Strange, you no, don't want to come off what? I don't want to come off like I'm doing something wrong. We're not. Dolores, you're hiding so much of yourself. I've seen your Eldritch Bless. What apples, bits of cotton, a fart, cake. <laughs> <laughs> the fart was, um, was good. it was, yeah, I it was real. It. <laughs> it was <laughs> so. Do you understand how much energy you are exerting by holding up illusions for every other cast you do? What are you worried about? I don't want them to see. They <sighs> don't need, because they don't need to feel what I'm feeling. Dolores, you've made a pact with these people now. Your friends, I saw the whole thing. Hands together, I watched through the fireplace. I'm sorry. They love you, Dolores. You said you weren't gonna watch me all the time. Oh, not all the time. Certainly not. There's not always a fire. Well, yes, we made a pact and it was the right thing to do because we're stuck in this house. So what then? They've made a pact. Do you not trust them to honor it? If they see you act as you really are, do you think they'll run away? I gave you this power. It is something to be proud of, I don't not want them to, to see it. Why? Because it's scary and dark. To whom? Them. Dolores, you may not know this or recognize it yet, but I do care for you quite a bit. You're like a mother to me. I know. I said I would restore your motherhood. That's the deal. I restored your motherhood, well, you became my mother. I revived your children, they're off elsewhere and well, they're safe. they don't know who I am. So, are they not happy? I, I can don't tell you they know. are. I, I do, don't know. And they are, Dolores. Where That's are the deal. They? Where are they? Out in the world. One of them's married, you have a grandchild. I have a grandchild? Yes. Oh my God! And because of the sacrifice you made, they get to have a happy life. And I made that happen too. I can't give you the world, but I gave them safety and I gave you what I could. You lied to me. I said nothing that was a lie. I said I would restore your motherhood, you're a mother. You said you were gonna bring my family back, but they I don't did. even know who I am. Doesn't matter, they're alive, they're back, they're here, they're living their own lives. We all lose our parents. It is a parent's dream to go before their children. The alternative is awful. That's what you sold. Dolores. But I don't want them to know. I don't want. Fine. My new friends to know. This Fine. is good. Good. Then so be it. And you're welcome, by the way. You touched so much in this enchanted castle, a power that is directly tied to me and the fiends. I don't know what's going on here, but a lot of things were trying to get to you. Here. And he pulls out of his pocket this beautiful amulet. 
It starts to catch the light from the fire behind him. And on one side, it looks beautiful and pure. And if you flip it to the back, the light completely changes and it looks grotesque. Oh. But if you were to wear it, it's only visible to you on that side. It's a little heavy. It Lois, looks a little big. It's not about the looks. Oh. Once per day, call on me for extra strength. If you are out of juice, if you need to cast a spell and you don't have anything left, I am there for you, mother. But I am trying to block everything so they don't find out. They don't have to. Look at how beautiful it is on this side. I don't want it. Fine. I can only hope you can protect the rest of your crew. Fine, I'll take it. I'll oh, take good. It. Well, there we go. Can I put it in my pocket? Yes, do what you like. It's a gift. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. I will bring you more magic. Thank you. You're welcome. One bit of advice. Yes. You're not the only one who touched anything. And the dream wisps away as Wait, as wait, it wait! And you sit bolt upright in bed saying, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> cut now to Coda. Oh. <laughs> I'm back. Amazing. <laughs> Bernie's Great. still downstairs just like. So we go away from Dolores for a moment. Coda. Yep. You've just finished up your four hour trance. Yep. Pulled out of it a little bit sooner than you'd usually expect. Yeah. From a glowing light in the corner of the room. Okay. You look over and you see it's coming from the pommel of the dagger. I get up, don my clothes, and I'm gonna return this dagger. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna grab it. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna cast Detect Magic. Okay, cool. So you cast Detect Magic, and you see this pommel has a light blue sort of mistiness to it. You're able to see it extending in a straight line, maybe two feet ahead of you, pointing very directly in a specific direction. Okay, I grab it. Okay. And I lift it up towards, and I take it out of the door. Great. So it, uh, this it starts to curve toward the stairway that you originally went up to get to this area. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna keep walking. Okay, as you're doing that, the ruby starts to glow more and more and more. Um, you get to the bottom of the stairway. Um, the room you originally got it to is off to the left, and then off to the right is an unexplored area. And which way's the light pointing? So as you hold this dagger and move it toward the room you're about to, you know, you're thinking you wanna return it to, the, the light goes out. Okay, I go the, I turn it around. It grows even brighter. Okay, then I go that way. Fantastic. You keep following this light until you make your way to a different door you haven't seen before. The doors have symbols above them all, but this one has a helmet and a blade. The door is shut. Okay, I'm gonna put my ear against it and use a perception roll to see if I can hear anything. Okay, great. Eight plus three. So, Eight plus three. 11. Absolutely nothing. The door is cool against your face and you don't hear anything. Okay, I open the door. As you open the door, you step in, and there is a much larger than it should be blank room. A row of benches off to either side, but otherwise very open. Um, can you give me, can you roll a d20 for me, please? Uh, passive wisdom. That is a 15. Oh, plus three. Plus three, great, so that's an 18. So you can see very clearly that there is, this is a blank room, but there's some uh, shimmering elements toward the top and the side, almost, again, like you see a mirage when the road starts to waver a little bit. Every once in a while, you can catch, catch a flicker of that. Okay, I, is the light still pointing towards the middle of the room? It is. Then I go closer towards the middle of the room. So as you stand in the middle of the room, the light fades and the door shuts. <gasps> and as you look behind you, you're no longer in a room. You're in an arena. You can hear voices flicker in and out of your perception, but you start to hear like, champions of this year. Oh shit. And you start to look around to the other side. When you turn back, the other side's an arena as well. And you start to recognize people, your people, the Eladrin, the elves of seasons. All of them there? All of them there, in very specific sections. Toward one side, you see people who are autumnal, dressed in elegant, regal garb of fine silks. The Eladrin of winter, dark skin with fur lining everything. Somehow not hot in all of this regalia. Those of the spring, very nature driven, in light clothing made of leathers and um, beautiful leaves draped all down them. And then your people of the summer in these bright desert styles, screaming, cheering most fiercely of all. And from either side of you, you start to feel footsteps and the voice flickers back in. It says, I'm a cure of the year. These four challengers. And you look to your left. And these figures start to become a little bit more clear. And you see someone of the winter Aladrin and someone of the autumn Aladrin 
step for toward each other and make direct eye contact. They tap blades and step back. And as you look to the right, you see a helm on a slightly familiar figure of the Spring Eladrim nod to you and draw their blade. Roll for initiative. Oh, shit. Eight. Eight. Plus 11. So the figures to your left immediately rush together, one of them drawing a blade, another one casting an ice storm. Their residual effects are making their way over to you, so the ground is slippery and wet and full of sleet. The one in front of you takes its staff and imbues it with an extra bit of strength. You see a magic that you've seen many times before. They then reach out their hand and use Entangle. Go ahead and for me, roll a strength save. Yes. 18. All right, so they're casting Entangle. These vines start to whip up from the ground with beautiful white spring blossoms all along them, and they reach along your feet. But you, imbued with the rage of battle, immediately shake them off. I cast Blade Song as a bonus action, mm -hmm. and then I cast Tensor's Floating Disc as my action, which does like a thing that I can stand on. Ooh. So I jump on it. Amazing. And then as my thing, I say, stop, stop, what are you doing, stop. Fan, stop. Hearing this name, you see this, uh, this person from across you sort of look down, take a deep breath, and reaffix their helmet and look back up. And the voice flickers back and says, What are Amakir of the Ever Summer Sands making the first attack against Fane? And it fades away again. Looking to your left, you recognize these other people Senen of the Autumn Eladrin and Aethwin of the Winter Eladrin going at each other, neck and neck. Senen beats his fist into the earth, and from either side of Aethwin, these huge chunks of earth and clay start to grab them and pull them down and begin to crush. From that, Aethwin holds out their hand and shoots a blast of ice, nicking Senen in the neck. They're grasping it deeply. They're locked in battle. It is once again Feyn's turn. Feyn looks at you and feels this sense of duty. Fane is going to be using Thunder Wave. So they take their hand, place it on their shillelagh, and blast a huge cone of thunder at you. Give me a, uh, let's see here, give me a constitution save. 16. 16 plus? Plus one, 17. So this thunder arcs from either side of you, and even though it's missed you from the back, it does travel through the ground and does, let's see here, 1d8 of damage to you. It does five damage to you, Coda. Okay. All right, and you can see, even though they have a helmet on, something about Feyn's posture is not happy that they had to do this. That crowd erupts. I'll use face step, which is like, I can, I basically teleport, and I teleport right next to um, Feyn. I grab him and use shocking grasp. Amazing, so as a face step of the summer Eladrin, um, you are going to catch him on fire. Can you roll that for damage for me, please? Four four damage. All right, so uh, Feyn takes four burning damage, and while they've seen this action many times before, they've never seen it up close, and they've never seen it directed at them. Ooh, can I describe my face step? Please. Okay, so my face step, my teleport, it's kind of like I vanish into sand. So like my whole body just Love that. into a spinning sand, and then all of a sudden sand recreates my body right next to him. I love that. And then he catches on fire. Catches on fire. So you see Feyn look up in anger and confusion and hurt as you Grasp them for shocking grasp. Can you roll that for me, please, for to hit? Yes. 18. Man, this is when you're using all your rolls. I love it. Yeah, right. uh, roll for damage, that hits. Five. So you've done 10 damage to them. They are standing there physically shocked and emotionally. And as they move their head and rear back, you can catch an eye through their helm. And you see a t single tear drop down. And they whisper, do it. The crowd begins to cheer. Coda, 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 Coda. You look over and the, El the Ever Summer Sand Eladrin are losing their minds. They're looking over to the Spring Eladrin and making jeers with their face and making rude hand gestures and just yelling, starting to throw things. You turn to your left and the Eladrin of Autumn, Senin, has an icy gash on the other side of their neck oh, as well. Shit. Aethwin, also panting over them, breathing, not doing well. You can see chunks of earth and sand fall out of their mouth as they're fighting. It is Feyn's turn. Feyn tries, uh, they reach up with their shillelagh and try to hit you. That is a miss. 
even though they're right next to you and they've Dance. got this stick, they whiff you. They whisper, do it. I cast right next to him, I cast Agonar's Scorcher. It's a huge wall of flame just right in front of me. It's 30 feet. How far is um, Aethwin? They are about that far from you. Okay, so I've positioned myself in a way that he is in direct line with Aethwin. Got the it. winter one. Okay, so Faye and... And then I cast Agonar's Scor... Ag Agonazar's Scorcher, which is a giant wall of flame in front of me. Amazing. So, Aethwin that hits. Faye and... Ooh. Faye and dodges it perfectly. Damn. So this huge wall of fire shoots out to the left. Aethwin has barely enough time to look up before both of them are engulfed in flames, and the crowd goes insane. However, Fan, afraid of the flames and already on fire from your last attack, dodges backwards with nimbleness like you've never seen, and their helmet falls off in the scuffle. And through this wall of flames, you make direct eye contact. Fan says, You can barely hear it over the sound of the crowd, but you recognize the lip movements. I turn and I run. The crowd erupts. The joy, the cheers, turn to screams of anger, throwing things at you. The spring Aladrin are cheering, roaring. The summer Aladrin are saying horrible things, the likes of which you won't be able to forget. And as you run, and you run, and you begin crying and screaming, you find yourself at the foot of a bedroom out of this room, leaving the dagger where it stood. And I'm back at my... You're at a bedroom. <laughs> Do I hear that inside? Is there anything above the door? No, but you can hear sniffles inside. <laughs> um, I open the door. Uh, you see Dolores. Hello. Oh, sorry. I uh, heard sniffles. Oh, I was just, I, I, it's very dusty in here. It's extremely dirty and, and um, it's allergies. Dolores, what? you can tell Coda's been crying. Are you okay? Just allergies. Oh, yeah, it's the time of the season. Who are you looking for? What? How did you know? Game recognizes game. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I can't believe you can't tell the others. No, of course not. Promise? I promise. I'm looking for, I'm looking for my family. How did you lose them? Oh, um, yeah, they were murdered by an entire band of mercenaries and I made a pact with the devil to bring them back to life and he did and he lied and they don't remember me and I don't know where they are and they don't know who each other is. I'm so was that your question? I give Dolores a hug. I've never gotten a hug from you. That feels really good. You're like, I'm, I'm really low on your leg, so let me just, let me just, um, let me get up here. Oh my God, you are all muscle. You are all muscle. Yeah, I'm pretty lean. Wow, who did you lose? I was in a tournament to the death with a person I love and I couldn't kill them, so I ran. Oh my God. And they ran too. Oh, why did they run? We couldn't kill each other. <gasps> Don't cry. Oh my God, that really is the saddest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Mine is my story. Right. Can I give you a hug? No. Oh, um, okay. And we leave our scene on that. All muscle. <laughs> we move on over to another room. <sighs> that one. <laughs> Fernie, Fernie wakes up and he's just like, Oh my God, I have an idea. He walks over to Bug's, Bug's bed and he like walks up to Bug and he like leans, leans in. Bug, Bug, Bug. What? Bug, I just had the craziest idea. We fight everyone and become the best fighters in the world? That's pretty cool, but I have an even better idea. Yeah, what is do it? Do what I do. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. 
no one ever played patty cake with you before? No, well, yeah. I mean, you don't know what money or a toilet is, so why should this This is so me? crazy. This is the most eventful thing that's happened on this <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> You're so right. Yeah. Those those losers are probably asleep. They're probably just asleep doing nothing. We can't tell them that we're bonding like Let's this. Let's never tell them that we had this huge character development moment. <laughs> <laughs> right now. I'd love to take this moment and just let you know, I think you're the strongest. I don't even know what you are. I don't know if you even have a method to how you move, but I'd love to just, uh, just, you know, move like you can. Well, I guess all you have to do is replace all of your body parts with like wooden, <laughs> wooden robotic parts, which is what a bunch of woodland creatures did for me. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that won't work for me. All right, but thanks. Okay. <laughs> so the next morning you all awaken feeling refreshed despite these moments of catharsis or patty cake and <laughs> like oh. come out of these rooms the sun is beaming through your moon window it's dual function oh. and you wake up feeling like yourself again like maybe you are a mother even if it's not to the same people. Yeah. So with a renewed sense of purpose, you all walk down to this common area to share a word before you sign the contract or don't. Okay, so I, re I say, remember, we're signing the contract, and also don't mention that I killed the king. And I put the knife back. Wait, wait, right. was the plate the prince? Because I was I was thinking. Was what maybe, plate the prince? Nothing. What, what are you talking wait, about? Wait, okay, we, Crashed a couple plates because they were trying to attack us. The plates us. are enchanted. What if it was the prince? I so don't we just thought they were plates. Prince. But me and yours, we broke a bunch of plates. And it felt really <laughs> good. It felt really good. And you didn't think to tell us this before we talked about the contract? I didn't know the plates were. Pr oh right, because we, we should have learned that the it. prince yeah, were plates. It. Okay. But yeah, I, you're right. Yeah. But yeah. we're all in, right? We're all in. No, no one woke up in the middle of the night with last minute doubts. Absolutely nothing happened last night. <laughs> you just have to keep it secret. <laughs> for some reason, Fernie's like, Fernie's like, yeah, nothing crazy happened last night. Wait, I'm sorry. Did you mention that you put the knife back? Put the what? Where? The knife back. The knife? What knife? You got, we gotta get this. We gotta get this curse over with. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Let's okay, go, okay, go. okay. Okay. Today's the beginning of our lives. <sighs> Today we become adventurous and not mercenaries. So you walk back into the library after having a quick small breakfast, maybe in the in the little common room. Yeah, continental just breakfast, sweet coffee little continental and croissant. Breakfast. Yeah, that too, both of them. And Gaspard turns to greet you and says, "Ah, our esteemed guests, it's wonderful to see you. You all look so refreshed and developed as characters." <laughs> With <laughs> Gaspard uh, pulls out once again a long piece of paper, a standard mercenary contract, employing you for a new one-off freelance position to break the curse of Castle San Savur. Okay, so 100,000 or something like that? Whatever's in our vault, you may have. Okay, um, where are the just, uh, uh, he's a, Like a little quill ah. pops up um, in front of him. A feathers really tickle me. Oh, good. Okay. As long as none of you are allergic to cats. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, he holds out this contract. Uh, do you all, what do you do? So Fernie, this is a pen. Uh, yeah. Quill, yeah, I know what to do with this. Fernie walks up, he grabs the quill, and he just, he, he sits there scribbling, and then when he walks away, it's just an impeccably drawn tree. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's very tiny, but it's just perfectly detailed, like fully de detailed pine tree. Fernie, is that your signature? Okay, I take the pen, and I draw, I, I like scribble, and it's a sun. <gasps> and I take the pen, and I write in the most beautiful, old school cursive, Dolores Paradise, with a little flower as the eye. And I take it and I uh, um, I write in bubble letters, hero. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, the... I have to add one thing. <sighs> and a little cute slice of pie. Ech. All right, this what did I do? legally binding document with all of your actual names on it <laughs> is complete. Welcome to Castle saint Sauveur. But I think it's time for the Dagger of Friendship. And, yeah. Uh, one of the uh, one of the stained glass windows goes. We cannot find it, my lord. We cannot find it. You guys. 
You are the worst types of people. <laughs> Excuse me? Us? You heard me. How dare you? Let's let bygones be bygones, and if the dagger finds its way back somehow. I, okay. Okay. I don't know where it is. No, me neither. That's the I, problem. I truly don't know where it is either, and if any of us ever did anything with it, we'd probably be a pretty bad person for that. Yeah. I right? agree. Yeah. No, oh, true. Bug? No. Bug? Bug. I, wow. I really didn't all, no, seriously. I can't believe you did. Wow. No, see, what? What? No. Maybe. Bug, it's okay, we got you. We don't know where the dagger is. Okay, well I hope by the end of this whole situation, we all know where the dagger is and no questions asked. Maybe my snoring has turned into sleepwalking and I've gotten out of hand because I don't remember. Mm. Oh. And with that, we will end this episode of Sword AF. Join us next time when we will see whether or not these heroes are gonna be able to break this curse or become a part of it. Bye. Bye. So long. Alvita Sayan.